Welcome to the God of Wonders radio broadcast with Pastor Kiruba Stephen and sponsored by El Bethel International Ministries. El Bethel International Ministries may be found on the web at album.org or you may call 845-360-0534 for prayer. Now, here's Pastor Kiruba. see your brother or sister move away from the Lord and go into the land of Moab it is important for you to give them the good news of what God is doing in the land of Israel if you don't do it they won't hear it faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God someone was a news bearer a good news bearer to Naomi, while Naomi was in Moab saying that, God has visited his people. God has visited his people. God has visited his people. There is bread here. She was not starving for bread. But she knew. But she was empty. I came to Moab full. But I'm going back to Israel empty, she said. Be a man or woman used by God to tell people, God has visited his people. When you receive bread from the hands of God, when you receive goodness from the hands of God, when you receive God's goodness, when you receive your own healing, when you receive your own deliverance, be a carrier of the good news to those who are in darkness, to those who are in Moab. Yes, even to those who have backslidden. Backslidden believers, when you see, don't think, oh, you know, they're in Moab. I don't want to even see their faces. They're in Moab. That's a very hypocritical, self-righteous, demonic spirit. Every believer who is a real believer should have a deep burden for those who are lost, especially the backslidden one. If you don't have any burden for those who are backslidden, I would question your walk with the Lord. Because Jesus has the burden for that one lost sheep that wandered away. Who are you to stand up and condemn someone because they went to Moab? Doesn't mean it was right. But it's not your place to look at someone who left Israel and went to Moab. Instead of praying for them, instead of fasting and praying for them, instead of praying for them with tears, to point fingers at them and say, oh, they're in Moab, I'm in Israel. Moab. You know what? It's the grace of God that you're in Israel. God can just uproot you in one second. You can get into the same state if His grace leaves you. It is the grace that covers us and keeps us where we are, Apostle Paul says. But for the grace of God, we too will be like them. So it is very important for every child of God, when you see someone backslidden, when you see someone walk away from God, when you see someone go from Israel to Moab, weep and pray for them. Be someone who would be the good news bearer to them to say everything you have to say about what God is doing in Israel. The news that came to Naomi was like, rain in the midst of a desert that's why when she heard that she said i'm gonna go yes she had bread here she knew that i need to get up and go even in the midst of moab let me tell you this god was working in naomi's heart without the spirit of god working in a person's heart no one could get up and go back to israel if God is working in the heart of someone and causing them to have a change where they said, even though I have bread here, I'm sick and tired of this place. I'm going to go. This is different than the prodigal son. The prodigal son had no food. Naomi had food over here. She didn't say, oh, it's such a shame. I don't want to go back to my place. And it's an embarrassing thing. If I go back, what will they say? And, and they'll look at me and they say, oh, you went to Moab and look at you. Your husband is gone. Your sons are gone. And... And they can say all those things. And Naomi didn't sit in the same spot in Moab. Saying, I have bread over here. It's okay. I have these two daughters-in-law. I'll just sit with them and three widows together. Have a pity party. No. Naomi got to a place where she humbled herself deep in her heart. True repentance will manifest itself in true humility. 
Naomi got to a place where she, she said, I heard the good news. I want to go there. In order for her to go there, she needed to humble herself. She could possibly hear other Israelites say all kinds of things about her who left Israel and went to Moab, which is not right anyway. But people will talk. But if we think about what people will talk, you're never going to inherit what God has for you. So when it comes to returning to your maker, don't worry about X, Y, and Z, agents of Satan, very well living in Israel. It is important for you to look at God and say, I'm returning to the Lord, God, my maker. I'm going there because God has visited his people. I want to be one among those who are visited by God. I want to be there. Yes, I strayed, but now I'm coming back to my maker. Don't let your pride keep you from heaven. Don't let your pride keep you from the living bread that God has for you. Don't let your pride keep you back, keep you in the wilderness. God is speaking to your hearts today. Move. It's time to move back. It's time to move back. Time to move back to Israel. It's time to put away your pride. It's time to put away everything that would keep you from entering into Israel. She got so comfortable with Moab. She knew everything about Moab. Moab became like her homeland. But she knew, I don't belong in Moab. How many of you have felt that when you lived a backslidden life? You felt comfortable in Moab, but you knew you didn't belong to Moab. God is speaking to our hearts today. When you see a backslidden believer who walked away from Israel and is sitting in Moab, may God give you pain in your heart so that you can have the burden of God and pray for them. God had pain in his heart. It took three deaths for Naomi for her to think about going back to Israel. Many times problems come to us and God applies that good pressure to take us into the eternal destiny that God has for us. That's what happened to Naomi. It's because of what happened in her life. She said, I'm going to go back to Israel. She came to a point and a place of repentance in her heart where she said, God, I'm going back to you. I'm going back to your house, the house of bread. I'm going back. I have bread from your hands. I'm not going to be in Moab anymore. God visited Naomi while she was in Moab, brought that conviction in her heart so that she can leave Moab and go to Israel. I want to speak over here for a few minutes as the Holy Spirit wants me to. When the real conviction of God comes to a man or a woman, when they're in Moab, which is sin, the real genuine conviction of God will cause them to leave Moab and move to Israel. If someone would tell me that I'm in Moab, God gave me the conviction and I'm so happy and I'm here, but I'm still in Moab, I would question their conviction. If they say that God is working in me, God is speaking to me, I'm reading the word, but I'm doing drugs. I'm reading the word, but I am working in a bar. I'm reading the word, but I'm living a life that is immoral. I'm reading the word, but I am doing things that are displeasing to God then I will question your walk with God. As soon as the conviction came to Naomi, she said, I'm going. You want to be a person who would show grace to someone who's gone astray. You don't run to Moab, remember. It's very important. There's some people who say, grace and mercy and what they say. Naomi, I'll come with you and I will help you in Moab. Disaster. You don't leave Israel. You don't leave the holiness God has given to you. You don't leave your place that God has given to you. If you want to help a person, you stay where you are and you pray. You stay where you are and show love. In the way an Israelite or an Israelite family or a group of Israelite people, whoever it was, showed God's love was to give them the good news that God is working here. Get back, get back, Naomi, get back, Naomi, get back, Naomi. God is looking for people of God who are in this church, who look at people who are backslidden. 
not only pray for them, but speak God's life into their life, saying, that, get back, get back, get back. God wants you to get back. There's bread here, get back. It's not too late for you to get back. Get back. You'll feel loved. Get back. She was broken and she was bitter on the inside. When she went to Israel, she told them, don't call me, know me. Her life became so bitter. It became so bitter because she went to Moab. Yes, there was a famine in Israel. But Naomi had what she needed to have, which was her family. Yes, there was famine in Israel. But you know what? Naomi was not bitter like that. But now, moving out of the will of God, going into the land where God told her not to, because an Israelite is supposed to be with the people of God, brought her and her family such disaster. Now the head of the house was Elimelech. He also went with her. They all went together. But understand the mercy of God. In spite of all of this, God came to Naomi. Now someone can still sit there and hear all the good news. Let me tell you, unless the Spirit of God brings a conviction and draws a person out of darkness to light, Nobody can get up and come by themselves. It's the grace of God that worked in the heart of Naomi. So whoever God used, whichever way, the grace of God went to her. Not only gave her the good news, but gave her the grace to leave sin, the land of sin, and go to the land of Israel where God was. Will it be the hands and feet of the Lord Jesus Christ? In this generation, to backslidden Christians, to backslidden believers, to people who don't know God, think about that. Naomi heard, she got up. Two Moabite women got up with her. I want you to read the rest. They both got up with her. They both started going. I don't know at what distance that Naomi told them, go back. They all started walking together. All three of them started walking together. All of a sudden, a test came for both of them. Are you going to stay here? You can stay here. I'm going. One out of two decided, the daughters-in-law, Ruth decided that she was going to go with Naomi. The other one, Orpah, also said she was going to go. But there was another test where Naomi says, no, no, you don't have to come. And she said, I'll come. No, no, you, have, you don't have to come. There was a test of what was inside the depths of her heart. Inside Orpah's heart was Moab. Inside Ruth's heart was Israel. When test comes, when trial comes, it will bring to surface what is in our heart. Very important to understand. Inside your heart, inside the depths of your heart, do you have the love for Jesus Christ? Ruth's love for Naomi was very strong. She said, no matter what, I'm leaving Moab. I'm leaving my parents. I'm leaving the place that I grew. I'm leaving everything. Naomi is a type of Abraham. She left everything. Understand this, Jesus said this, whoever leaves his father, mother, brother, sister, children, houses, lands in this world will receive father, mother, brother, sister, houses, lands with persecution hundredfold in this world and in the world to come. God will never shortchange anyone. If you say, I'm leaving Moab and I'm going to Israel, God who sees the hearts of men will say, you have a place in my land. Yes, you are a foreigner. Ruth, you're a foreigner. Naomi is returning to her place. But Ruth was a foreigner. As a foreigner, she's coming to the land of Israel. Think about this. The only reason she came to the land of Israel was because she loved Naomi. She said, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Your land is going to be my land. I'm leaving everything and I'm going to 
the God of Israel. Can you be like Ruth? Can you be such a person who would say, Jesus, you are my everything. You are my everything in order for me to be with you. Whatever baggage I need to drop off, whatever I need to throw away that is not of you, I want to put away every sin, lay aside every sin. Let us lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily entangles us. God is speaking to our hearts today. If you want to become a person of joy, like how Naomi became from bitterness to gladness, from sorrow to laughter, and for Ruth, from a lonely person to a joyful mother in Israel, Naomi, from a lonely person to a joyful mother in Israel, even though they walked away from the will of God, God took these two women and made them prominent women in the land of Israel. Do you think about the love of God? Can you understand the faithfulness of God? Can you understand the grace of God? The grace of God that comes to those who repent. Grace of God that comes to those who would forsake everything to follow Jesus. The grace of God that comes to give them a second chance. That second chance is not some weak chance somewhere. Okay, you came back to Israel, go sit in some outskirts of Israel. No. God gave Ruth a place in Israel, a prominent place in Israel. God gave Naomi a place in Israel, a prominent place in Israel. You know why? Because Naomi humbled herself and she came back to the God of Israel. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. When Naomi humbled herself and came to Israel, God exalted her in Israel among the people of God. God said, Naomi, this was your original call. This is what I want to do with your life before. Where do you go? You went out of the way. The good shepherd went and carried that lost sheep. The moment that lost sheep came to Israel, God said, look what I'm going to do for you. She humbled herself. She was not sitting somewhere else, lonely in some isolation and said, okay, I came to Israel now. Just Ruth, just get me some bread. I'll sit in some corner. No. She came to the house of God. She came to the people of God. She came to the presence of God. And she became a woman who started to hear the voice of God. See, when she left Israel and when she went to Moab, she didn't go because God told her to go. No. She just got up and went. She, she looked at everything. Okay, this is the situation. What, is, what are my options? And I think this is a good option. And she went. She followed her own heart, which was led by the enemy. Pulled her out of the call of God and took her to Moab. But when she got up from Moab and went to Israel... This time, she's not led by her own heart, which was led by the enemy. The enemy is never going to lead you into the presence of God again. This was the Lord God Almighty working in her, knowing that she's lost, she's somewhere else. She would have cried out to God with three deaths in the house. Oh God, forgive me. God, I should have never came here. Lord, is there a way for me? Lord, can you do something in my life? Lord, can you use me now? I'm so bitter, Lord, on the inside. God heard her cry. The Lord gave her the good news that she needed to hear. And God gave her the encouragement for her to get up and go. Even though she was not all delivered from bitterness. She caught up from where she was with that baggage, with that heaviness. She just took one step at a time and went to the land of Israel. There when she set foot in Israel came deliverance from the mighty deliverer who was the God of Israel. It's so important to know healing is in the presence of God. Deliverance is in the presence of God. When we walk away from the call of God, God says, remember, I've called you. Remember, if you return to me, I will reinstate you to the original plan of God. This is the voice of the Lord that is speaking at this hour. If you would have walked away anywhere, you would just wandered away, gone somewhere else. And you said, I don't know. Let me just go back and sit in some corner in Israel. God says, you're not called to sit in some corner in Israel. God is going to use you, yes, in his house, in his presence. When you give yourself over to humility and say, Lord, I will follow you. I'll humbly walk with my king. Hallelujah. 
God can take you and put you in a place better than before. That is who our God is. His grace and his mercy just overflows. He says, I'll put you in a place better than before. Better than before. Naomi, don't worry. Yes, you already repented about going to Moab. Now don't keep on repenting for the same thing you repented a thousand times. How many of you have done that? The enemy will come and make you feel guilty. Don't you remember you did that? You scoundrel, you went out of the way of God. Look at you. And then there are some people who say, I'm a scoundrel, Lord, I'm a scoundrel. What a scoundrel I am, I'm a scoundrel. I'm a... God doesn't want you to pray those prayers. Once you say, Lord, forgive me, and once you bitterly weep in the presence of God, thorough repentance is necessary, it is important. But once you thoroughly weep in the presence of God and say, Lord, I should not have done that. Lord, I didn't ask you when I left Israel. Lord, I just did my own thing. I thought I'd be happy. I thought our family would be happy. Lord, I came here. I did not do your will. But now I want to do your will, Lord. Now I want to be in the center of your perfect will. Lord, the call that you have on my life, I don't want to lose that, Lord. And God says, get back, let's go. Let's go. When you walk with God, God is like that good Samaritan. When he hears our cry for help and say, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me. He comes and he, he picks us up from where we are. He brings us to Israel. It takes humility to cry out for help. Only the proud, even though when they get beaten, they won't cry out for help. They'll say, I'd rather die than someone come and carry me. But those who are humble, God's word says, the meek will inherit the earth. You want to fulfill the call of God that God has for your life, which is the most important thing. The reason why we were created in this world. The reason why God brought us into this world. Get back into the presence of God. Get back into the house of God. And tell the Lord, Lord, I will humble myself. And I'm going to do what you want me to do. And God says, in my house. You don't have to sit in one corner. I'll give you a prominent place in Israel. This is the Spirit of God speaking at this hour. Whoever you are, receive what the Lord God Almighty is speaking. God will raise you up. The more you humble yourself, the more the mighty hand of God will raise you up. Precious Lord, we are grateful for your word today and for how your word calls us to be bearers of good news to those who are living in darkness, especially to those who have been backslidden. I pray that each one of us would bear the burden for the lost sheep in our own midst, Father. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you fill us, that you'd strengthen us, and that you'd make us bearers of the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And further, Lord, as we believe in faith, we thank you that you will lead our loved ones out of the darkness in the very same way you led Naomi back to Israel. We commit these prayers and our affections to you, Most High God, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now for our featured testimony of the week, let's hear from Mike Palumbi of the emotional and mental healings that he received from the Lord at El Bethel International Ministries Church. I grew up in a home that was physically and emotionally abusive, where I developed a poor self-esteem as a young boy. And ultimately that led me into a world of drug abuse and addiction, criminal behavior, and ultimately to three years in New Jersey State Prison. It's been a lot of hills and valleys in my life, but I can stand here with complete confidence today and declare that my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has healed me and delivered me from a life of crime and addiction, from anger and rage and violence, from smoking, from foul language, and from gambling. My life verse is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live that life by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What Jesus did for me, he can do for you. You're the God of wonders. This broadcast with Pastor Kiruba Stephen was sponsored by El Bethel International Ministries. You may find El Bethel International Ministries at elbim.org. That's E-L-B-I-M dot O-R-G or call 845-360-0534 for prayer. That's 845-360-0534. Yes, you are.